Did you know that the Earth is constantly moving? Yes, we know it rotates around the Sun, and yes, we know it rotates on its own axis, but the Earth's crust is constantly moving. Maybe if we stand really still right now, we'll feel it. No, I don't think we're going to feel it now. Actually, the only way we're going to feel the Earth's crust moving is if there was an earthquake. But I'll tell you about that a bit later. For now, let me explain to you how the Earth is moving. The Earth is made up of different layers. The important layers that make the Earth move are the asthenosphere, which is molten liquid rock that is constantly flowing, and the lithosphere, which is like the skin of the Earth. It is made up of the Earth's crust and part of the upper mantle. We all live in the lithosphere. The lithosphere is broken into different sections called the tectonic plates. There are eight major tectonic plates on the surface of our planet, and lots of minor plates too. These plates are like restless children, they never stay still. They are continuously moving around, but they only move a few centimetres a year. That is why you cannot feel the Earth's crust moving when you stay still. These plates are on top of the asthenosphere. The core of the Earth gives off so much heat that the molten rocks actually melt. All of that liquid rock is moving what's on top of it, just like a leaf on top of a puddle. Now because these tectonic plates are always moving, they're going to meet at some point. And the parts that meet are called the plate boundaries. There are three different ways that the plate boundaries can meet together. Divergent plate movement is when two tectonic plates are moving away from each other, and that makes a gap in the middle. This enables molten rock to rise up from the mantle, through the gap, and create a new crust. This normally happens under the sea and can take millions of years. Convergent plate movement is when two tectonic plates collide or crash into one another. Now, because they're going to crash into one another, one of them is going to partly go underneath the other one. When this happens on land, it creates a magnificent mountain range. Now, near convergent plate movements can be when lots of earthquakes do happen. Transformative movement is when two tectonic plates are sliding next to each other, and that causes a massive amount of friction. Just like if you were to push really hard on your hands and try and make them move. Now, this friction on the Earth's surface is felt as an earthquake. The most famous of the transformative plate movements is in the San Andreas Fault in California, where they get a lot of earthquakes. The Rockies, or more formally known as the Rocky Mountains, is a mountain range that stretches from Canada to America. It goes from a province called British Columbia all the way down to New Mexico. It is nearly 5,000 kilometers long. Now, the mountains that you can see behind me are part of the mountain range in Canada. Now, based on what we've learned about plate boundaries and plate movements, how do you think these mountains here were formed? Divergent, convergent, or transformative? Tell the person next to you what you think. These were made by two plates colliding together and one of them going underneath the other one. So, convergent movement. Take a close look at the mountain range. You can see by the shape and the angle that they are that they were pushed upwards. The Himalayan mountains, including Mount Everest, was formed the same way as these. Also, while we're looking at the mountains, you can see all the different coloured layers. Well, these mountains didn't just appear overnight. They have been very slowly pushed. The last time the plates were pushed against each other was 55 to 80 million years ago. Each layer that you can see on the mountain are layers from the old seabed millions of years ago. Believe it or not, the tops of these mountains used to be the bottom of the ocean. 
Scientists have found old shark's teeth and ancient coral reefs in the tops of these mountains. Now, I know this might be a lot for you to take in. I know it is for me, but it just reminds me that our earth is always moving. Activity time. You're going to be working in pairs and using a ball of Play-Doh as your asthenosphere. And you're going to have two rectangular shapes as your tectonic plates. Using the task cards, you are going to recreate the different plate movements that we've talked about today. Try and take a photo of each one. Now, you all have fun with your plate boundary movements. You've done an excellent job today, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Why not continue learning by clicking on one of these lesson videos? And make sure to click that subscribe button. Happy travels.